Greetings, dabblings, and welcome back to our Timberborn series with the Iron Teeth, of course. Now, since the last episode, I've had plenty of time to digest the advice that I was offered. Thank you very much for that, by the way. It was invaluable. Not only the advice that's specific to Iron Teeth, but there were some gems in just in general regard to Timberborn. One of them in particular has stuck with me, and that is that uh, grilled potatoes, whilst they are not just uh, particularly uh, nutrient-dense for the growing time, because one potato turns into four grilled potatoes, but rather that 30% strength buff, while it sounds impressive enough by itself, when applied to builders in particular, means that they can carry two logs, not just one, which literally halves the time it'll take to build anything. That is a huge buff and something that we're going to be taking with us forward. Now, we've got a couple of uh, items on the docket for day. Now, uh, for today. Now, the first one uh, will actually probably not be the first completed, but it's something that we definitely need to get on with, and that is generating power and specifically generating planks, because a lot of these things that we're going to want to try and get to are going to start needing this more advanced resource. And the lumber mill needs 50 horsepower worth of uh, mechanical power. The compact water wheel can produce 40 horsepower. Uh, this can produce 50, so that's uh, what we're going to go with there, the power wheel. Uh, though, uh, 40 horsepower divided by CMS. Hmm, CMS. I'm not actually sure what that means though i imagine it has something to do with the flow of water that's going to be my guess at the very least but we'll be going with the power wheel which is basically a giant hamster wheel though in this case will be a beaver wheel the other thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to place down another farmhouse now we don't yet have the population to run everything in our colony as is but I would very much like to get the uh, second farmhouse up and running. And I'm going to also pause these where I can. I'm going to be using priorities where necessary to make sure that certain things are running at all times. But there's nothing for us to harvest down here, so we don't really need to worry about that. This one is on a very high priority, and I'm going to do the same over here. I want my farms to be running full bore more or less. Now the second farm over here, I would like that to be constructed quickly and then also to have a very high priority. This one will be focused on harvesting. This one will be focused on planting and when they work in conjunction, they will get the work done very, very quickly. And once the work is done, I can more or less pause their production. I don't need people working in the farms if there's nothing to harvest and there's nothing to plant. But generally speaking, when a harvest happens, I want it to be replanted as quickly as possible. So that's going to be another big thing for us. Over here, we've got the carrot set up. They will request 10, but will allow up to its full capacity of carrots to be stored. And once this one is done, we will have much the same thing for sunflower seeds. Now, someone has mentioned that sunflower seeds may need to be cooked in order to be eaten. That would kind of make sense, but at the same time, uh, I'm fairly certain, though it's not a not a, a staple of my diet, I will confess, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty certain I've just eaten just sunflower seeds. So uh, I'm I would be a little bit surprised but also not, I guess. You know, you, you do tend to, to bake pumpkin seeds uh, for when you're making bread with them, but uh, I'm not sure if it's ju that's just because it enhances them or because it's actually strictly necessary for them to be nutritious. But I'm fairly certain we should be okay with sunflower seeds. I guess we're going to be for sciencing that in this episode. Now, another thing that I would like to do as well is pop down a water barrel and also acknowledge the advice that I was given. That it would be very useful to have water barrels kind of um, dispersed across the colony so that our uh, beavers should a beaver get thirsty over there doesn't need to run all the way down here to quench their thirst that makes a lot of sense later right now my focus is largely on getting water stored so that it can carry us through the coming droughts and for that to be the most efficient i need that water that uh, pipeline between the water producer and the water storage to be as short as possible because uh, realistically i want to be gathering this water during the 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 uh, the wet season not during the drought if i could just turn this off during the drought that would be ideal but uh, of course that, there is a bit of risk involved with that now uh, it's going to take a little while to get everything set up and running so i shall bring you back when there is something interesting to report okay then so the interesting thing is that in three days we're going to have another drought as you can see i've managed to finish one 
of the small water tanks and we're starting work on a second but also we have got a new beaver that has grown up closer to the wake has joined the fold thank you ever so much for your patron support you're already pretty happy with the carrots and indeed look for sciencing is complete sunflower seeds can just straight up be eaten which is marvelous now the next item on the uh, list of advice was very specific to the iron teeth and that is regarding the breeding pods now it never occurred to me but you apparently can simply pause them it doesn't make the most sense to me, I'm going to be honest, that you can just, ah, you know, this this developing fetus, ah, we just want to put it on hold for a second. Now, I know that, you know, to be fair, there's quite a lot of animals that actually can do that. Rabbit, in particular, which uh, my parents kept uh, quite a lot of, uh, they can do that if... Uh, if a pregnant doe feels that the situation isn't exactly uh, conductive to raising a litter, uh, then she can simply uh, stall the the uh, the pregnancy. And uh, yeah, it just it just she just continues to maintain the now no longer developing fetus for quite some time. They can they can hold it off a, for a fair old while, or can simply choose not to be pregnant anymore, which is a, a rather interesting evolutionary trait. But, you know, rabbits be rabbits. Uh, now, uh, we are seeing that our farms are doing actually quite well. We've already got a decent amount of sunflower seeds. But I think we really, really do need to get up to grilled potatoes as quickly as we can. Now, the grill uh, takes a little bit of effort. It takes uh, one log, one potato, makes four meals, which is lovely. Let's go ahead and place this down there. Where are we going to situate this? I'm thinking of... Hmm, I would kind of like to have this around here, but at the same time, I would love to have these built up on top of the uh, the structures where they're going to be used. But I, I guess we could just have uh, one, maybe even two there, just to kind of build for uh, future expansion. I don't want to fill this little spot in here because I want a path there eventually. So I'm going to place the first grill right about there, and I guess we are going to be building up into this area. Not ideal, but it will do for now. And we're going to have a uh, place to store the grilled potatoes. I am going to see whether we need to store the grilled potatoes or the potatoes themselves. We might end up wanting to store both independently. That may then give us a little bit of additional uh, support because uh, when times are nice and easy, we build up a, a large stock of just potatoes. But should times ever become particularly hard, then we uh, will have those uh, potatoes in hand and might be able to get through a couple of droughts where the farming is awful just cooking the potatoes we put by into grilled potatoes that might actually be quite a useful thing going on there i have queued up another two breeding pods there's a lot of work for our beavers to be doing right now i know but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through this relatively quickly we're also building up a decent amount of science now as much as getting to this is ultra important Right now, well, actually, is there anything else I would rather have? I mean, I could get the levee, which would allow us to completely block water flow. And that would be useful, certainly. But anything more complicated than that, including the platforms and the stairs, needs planks. So ultimately, I think we're going to need to go down the plank route uh, much, much sooner rather than later. Uh, so, with that in mind, let's have a look at how much that would cost us. It's only 15 logs, and the power to, uh, the, rather, the wheel to power it, that is, well, actually, that's quite a lot. That's 40 logs, so that's probably not going to be something that we do anytime soon. There we go. We've got a, a second water tank. That's fantastic. We've got only one uh, spare beaver over here, but we're almost done with all of the planting on this side, which is actually quite nice. But that being said, I think... It's time for us to go ahead and plant a lot of crops. Now, this entire area back here should be manageable for the beavers that we have. So hopefully we're going to see all of that get done. Now, we're obviously going into a drought period, but uh, this area, thanks to the water that we've got, stored here should be okay we'll have to see how that all pans out but uh, right now we've got two beavers who will focus on harvesting the remaining crops and then two who are just going to focus on getting all of this planted and then we're going to be able to uh, retire them to other jobs for the short term uh, we're still going with the berries as well now ultimately i would like to get up here 
and add another area of uh, dams, or or rather to uh, get well, yeah, actually, yeah, dams, uh, just along there, just to add a little bit more uh, water retention, and we, then we could delete one of the dams and allow it to kind of trickle down whatever's put by up here to just reinforce the water down there, and that may be able to help us uh, moving forward, but it'll be a little while before we get that set up, if I'm perfectly honest. We've got a fairly healthy amount of food, though, and I'm very happy to see that. We're actually doing relatively well for the water as well. So all things said and done, I'm in a pretty good place right now. We've almost finished off getting rid of these trees, so we're going to continue to move our lumber beavers around just to uh, help clear out these areas but we're not going to be replanting trees around here so uh, for the time being uh, as soon as these are completely removed so too will the uh, the uh, lumberjack flag as well oh we've got this set up marvelous okay well there's no point in that being running right now because we don't have any potatoes to go in there but i will set this one up for potatoes over here so none allowed but for the time being, I'm just going to say grilled potatoes. I don't know how quickly one grill is going to be able to produce the potatoes. Will it be fast enough that I don't need to worry about the uh, the other areas? I don't know, but we'll we'll definitely have a uh, have a watch of that, and maybe we will have to have two storages. But for the time being, we're just going to focus on storing the grilled potatoes ultimately since ideally we want to turn all potatoes into grilled potatoes rather than than keep a stockpile though uh, you know as i've mentioned earlier that will be helpful a little bit later on we've got 1.1 day until the drought arrives i'm going to just uh, speed things up a little bit we've got another uh, another uh, breeding pod up and running and that one should be finished off very soon there we go we've got the second one going as well okay this is getting reasonably good we've also got some berries being harvested uh should we turn this one on probably not right now i'm going to say we've got a lot of stuff happening and uh, we've got a lot of work yet to do but there we go wow are they getting another harvest of carrots my lord i was not expecting that that is very very good uh though given that i'm going to say that we probably don't need you active not both of you anyway as useful as it is having the two of them i don't think that's necessarily going to be the best thing for us right there how are we doing for berries 75 that's not too terribly bad all right well i'm afraid the drought is almost upon us but i'm fairly confident that we're going to be able to get through this one without too much uh distraction uh what we will do is in the meanwhile then i'm going to set up the area for our uh for the power and the plank production how are we going to set this one up though is the big question how are we going to lay these out the plank production is a two by three with a direct to the side exit or rather to the head i guess this would be the side i suppose though uh it does make it a little bit more awkward to place and this one actually you know what we could put it there now you could have an axle between it but honestly there's no reason since this is going to generate exactly enough energy to get that running sure we'll just place that in there i'm going to move this one just to the side this in fact doesn't need to be there anymore it's been completely emptied out so let's get rid of you build a little path going all the way up and indeed across and then we'll rebuild that flag right there that should actually work out quite well for us i think but there we go we've seen all of the uh, water that we're going to get and that's all stored here i'm going to turn off the pump for now i think now a couple of people mentioned that it as long as a uh, water tile is exposed it will evaporate given enough time so i'm not actually sure if there is if it's better to turn this off and reduce the amount of water i'm actively taking out of this to try and extend this as long as it can uh, the growing area as long as i can or try and pump as much of it out because apparently once it's in the small water tanks it doesn't uh, evaporate so it might be that the small water tanks do though because they are uncovered whereas the larger water tanks are completely sealed at the top do let me know in the comments if you happen to know how all of that works either way though we've got 
a uh, lumber mill up and running and hopefully very soon we will have the power for to uh, add to that now with that in mind we are absolutely going to require a place to store the log so you know what maybe we shouldn't have this let's get rid of that then and add in another storage this would then allow us to store any of the planks that are created and i think that would actually be ideal that being said maybe it would look a little bit better oh yes it would uh, so we'll get rid of that again, pop, pop back uh, another uh, lumber flag, but I think that is going to look gorgeous. It also leaves us a little bit of room to get up there and a, a little bit of space on top for other buildings should we want them. Uh, let's go ahead and pop that back in there then. All right, not too bad at all. Right, we we're going to clear everything out of here and I will have this available for planks only and that should go a long way to allowing us to prepare the forester. At this point, we can comfortably unlock the forester, so I think we're gonna go ahead and do that because we're gonna to wanna to set that one up uh, relatively soon, I would say. Uh, the forester not only plants trees, but can also plant berry bushes. And I'm thinking of having this area dedicated to berry production uh, in the long term. Uh, let's have a look. How long have we got on here? They're 40% done. So they're going to be ready just as the drought ends. Pretty impressive, actually. I'm starting to think maybe we are going to need all of these, uh, the two of these farms running constantly. Uh, I think for as long as we don't dip into the berry bushes too aggressively, though, we should be able to continue expanding the population without much concern. But with that said... I'm going to allow a little bit of time to pass, and I shall bring it back, hopefully, as the drought is about to end. So see you soon. And welcome back to the drought being over. It is cycle three, day one. We are actually doing very well for the water we're being very lucky at the moment but i imagine these droughts are going to continue to get worse and worse as time goes on so we definitely need to uh, be a little bit more focused on getting this all sorted but as you can see during this drought we've actually done fairly well for ourselves we've got a good healthy stock of food over there we've even started producing planks which i'm especially happy with because that means we can now set up a forester uh, additionally, we are not very far. Oh, there we are. The uh, the potatoes are being harvested, so it's time for us to get that on the go. Uh, I am, in that case, going to shut down this berry gatherer down there, uh, just to move around some of our workforce. We seem to be doing relatively well. In fact, we've got a new beaver in the colony. Uh, Laujin grew up and chose their adult name to be Obror. Thank you ever so much for the support, Obror. Welcome to the colony. There we go. And soon you're going to have your own, uh, own grilled potatoes as well. Now, what are we going to use the rest of these research points on? Uh, well, we'll cover that in just a second. Let's first get a new Forester app and running. Now, the Forester, fairly simple little build in this one. Actually, decent amount of range as well. I would very much like this to be somewhere down here because I would like to have somewhere where the trees can continue to grow all the way through the the drought and that actually lines up perfectly with what I'm imagining. We are going to need to get rid of some items though. So mark resources for deletion. It is unfortunate but it does need to happen so these are going to be gone. Now this will hopefully reach all the way down there if we're very very lucky and with that we're also going to run the uh, a uh, path all the way down now i would very much like to get a little bit more going on over here about this spot i would say we're going to want that all the way up and across and we're, once again we're going to have to dig our way through some of these and that does sadden me but it is going to be necessary because we need access to this area. For the next thing that I'm going to unlock is going to be the floodgate and the platform. The platform is going to cost us 100. How much will the floodgate cost us? 
Uh, that one will cost us 150. Mm, okay, well, for the time being, we can just build dams and that will work. But we are going to need the platform relatively soon. So let's go ahead and unlock the platform. And since we're also here, it might be worth us grabbing the stairs soon as well. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. Let me get rid of that one. There we go. Now, what we can do is we can just build a dam over here. And uh, when we need to release the water up here, even though the dam is kind of a fixed building, we can just delete one of them and allow flow to return down here should the uh, the next drought be particularly nasty uh, for us. But we'll, we'll have to have a watch of how that one goes. Right now, we've got no builders to speak of, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, I'm going to pop that one up a little bit and drop both of these down. There we go. Let's make sure that they're not being... Uh, manned unnecessarily. We've got a, a good amount, 36 over there, and the potatoes are being stored, I guess, in the farms themselves. Now, fuel remaining. Oh, I've got to set the recipe. My bad. Uh, grilled potatoes, grilled chestnuts, or grilled spatter dock. We want grilled potatoes. There we go. Let's get that on the go. Up and running as fast as you can, please. And indeed, thank you. We've got plenty of new uh, new mouths to feed unfortunately let's uh for the time being i'm just going to pause that one uh this was a fantastic fantastic tip i will wait for the others to get much closer uh before we pause them but uh oh i believe one has grown up fantastic raul box very well raul box what will be your adult name oh my we have a, a zombie slaying hero amongst the beavers. Uh, apparently, uh, what took the humans out may not have been environmental uh, in, well, at least not directly. It might have might have been, in, in, in a sense, maybe the environment created the zombies. Nevertheless, Brutus Salazar has joined the colony to keep, uh, keep the zombies away from beaver kind. Well done, Brutus. Uh, now, we've got a forester. Now, we've got a couple of options with trees, and indeed with the uh, blueberries as well. In fact, the blueberries are going to be what I first set up. I would like an awful lot of blueberries over here, I think. Let's uh, get them all going. And I'm going to move this down. That one can just be uh, tucked in there. And then we'll delete the rest of these and uh, just have a path going across. This area is going to be for farmland, I think. Now, the thing with trees is that the trees have different growths. Blueberries will be ready to harvest uh, every 12 days. Once the plant, it takes 12 days for the plant to reach maturity, and then every 12 days thereafter, it produces three blueberries. Birch takes nine days to grow, and at the, when it's chopped down, it gives you one log. Pine, on the other hand, takes 12 days to grow, so uh, an extra third, but will double the amount of logs you get. Also, after seven days, you can harvest sap from it as well. Now, I believe the, the harvesting of sap is every seven days after it's reached maturity, so you have to avoid cutting them down. Maple, uh, again, I believe maple and chestnuts uh, both have repeatable harvests as long as the tree is mature. In the case of maple, it's maple syrup, and uh, chestnuts, it's uh, chestnuts. Uh, but with maple, every 30 days, you get eight logs, and with chestnuts, every 24 days, you get four logs. Uh, so, reasonably speaking, I mean, pine and chestnut are both exactly the same in terms of their yield per day, logs per day, if you like. And that is, they are strictly better than birch, which is about 1.1-ish. Uh, pine would be about 1.5, 1.6-ish. Uh, maple, though, is... Uh, sorry, I, I'm saying 1.1. Uh, it's uh, 0.11. 0.16 and uh, maple i somewhere like one uh, sorry yeah uh, 0.2526 somewhere on there uh, so if you've got the time maple is your biggest bang for buck but early on you probably don't have a lot of that time just uh, sitting around doing nothing so you might want to go for an easier tree to set up initially uh, let's go ahead and remove these resources there we go. This can now be deleted. There we are. This one will get a high priority, but I'm going to pause it for the time being. Uh, we will get to that in a moment, but uh, right now it's not a uh, big focus for me. And we've just reached... Uh, the beavers are happier than ever. You've reached a new well-being high score. 
Nice. Okay, what we got? Carrot, sunflower seeds, and grilled potatoes. Absolutely fantastic. This is marvellous. Now, under normal operation, you need to get to a, a well-being of 11 uh, to unlock the Iron Teeth. Obviously, we're playing with the Iron Teeth, so uh, I've already done that. Uh, but it's very, very uh, much worthwhile uh, noting. I am concerned, though, that we're not going to be able to store enough potatoes over here. Hmm. I'm thinking that we are greatly exceeding my initial expectations on how quickly we're able to gather potatoes. So I'm going to set this one up to take just raw potatoes. So let's go ahead and add these in. There we go. And that should help out. We're slowly building up all of this, and it is absolutely marvelous. Uh, right, how are we doing down here? We're actually doing relatively well. Let's uh, go ahead and build out this path. I'll have the path connect up right there in time. Uh, actually, I will allow you to quickly hop out and grab everything. It does look like we're not really shutting these these down at this point. Honestly, they're doing an amazing job, uh, but it's going to be one that takes... Uh, that it's going to be constant at the moment. They, they're constantly having to harvest something. Now, as I said, maple is the biggest bang for buck in the long term. So I would very much like to get a uh, maple tree farm going there. However, we want something that we can gather from in the short term as well. Now, I'm not sure. There's a little bit of green on these tiles, but I'm not convinced that that is going to work for us. So I'm going to pop that down right now, and we'll see where things go. Uh, both of these farms will be able to reach everything in this area, which is perfect for us. Uh, additionally, I would like uh, a couple more uh, berry bushes just down there, because that will easily be within range there. And in fact, we can take the berry bushes... Oh, actually? Hmm. You know what? Maybe I need to do this in a different way. I believe I've made a mistake in my plotting there. Let's go ahead and remove these resources instead. There we are. And I will delete these roads, and we're going to simply fill this gap with berry bushes. And that should be perfect. This is probably something I'm going to be able to shut down relatively uh, quickly once all of these have been planted. But uh, it will take a bit of time to get it going, especially because we really don't have uh, enough population. That being said, Vriska has go up, grown up, so let's find out their true name. I mean, I don't want to be raising any concerns, but we've got Brutus Salada Salazar and Dr. Lady Tara in the same colony. One, the zombie-killing uh, hero from Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, and the other... The bandit slaying hero from our Going Medieval series. Uh, what are they expecting is, is on the horizon? What what terrible, harrowing enemy is, is looming over there? I am concerned. Nevertheless, I'm sure we'll be fine. Now, I would very much like to get a dam all the way along here. Again, like I said, that will allow us to build up a nice stockpile of water on both sides. Now, these are going to be fairly high priorities, so I'm going to give them a nice big upgrade over there. There we are. It seems that by doing it there, I was uh, drawing up on the top level. It doesn't uh, it doesn't propagate downwards, it seems, so that's fine, I guess. Uh, right, next thing for us to do, we're currently, well, we're slowly filling up the, uh, the plank storage, but that does mean that we're dipping into the wood storage there as well, which is not the best thing in the world. But I think the next thing that we're going to unlock is the wooden stairs. Let's go ahead and grab that. Now, the wooden stairs is going to be especially useful for us for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is simply that I want to get up top here and grab these trees, uh, but also these trees down here, and perhaps even eventually the trees over on this side as well. For the time being, though, I think these... Well, that will take two stairs for me to get to. I guess I could just go up and around grab those. These would only take one uh, set of stairs for me to access, and it takes one log and four planks, so sure. Let's go ahead and set that up. I wonder if once we have access up there whether these trees will already be within your range. Either way, that's going to be the, the, the most cost-effective uh, access point for trees for us. We've got so much food to gather my lord, we do not even remotely have the population for this. You know what? I'm going to uh, unpause this. We need 
more baby beavers out there, please. And indeed, thank you. Chop, chop. Uh, and while that's going on, let's fill out this path a little bit more. I think a dedicated field of blueberries over here will probably be enough to sustain these because ultimately that's the only thing I want them to be used for. If there was a way for me to tell the beavers they weren't allowed to eat berries, I wonder if there is. That is a very common thing in any kind of colony management game, but uh, it doesn't look like that is available to me just yet, sadly. Oh well. Uh, we'll see what we can do. We've definitely got a bunch of uh, berry bushes over here to gather, so uh, we've got a fair old bit of work uh, ahead of us. Are we chopping down those trees? Yes, indeed we are. Marvellous. Okay, so uh, gonna have to pass a little bit more time, but we've got things on the go, and uh, at the moment I'm pretty happy with the way things are looking. We seem to be in a fairly good position, especially considering our water storage. So on that topic, there is a part of me that thinks it might be wise to drop another water barrel over here. Yes, pretty much after every drought, I'm going to add another water barrel. At least until we've got gears, and then I'll start just dropping down large water tanks. The small water barrel stores 30 water. The large water tank, which takes this room of three of them, stores 300. Very much worth it, but also quite expensive. Uh, we'll actually need to research to get the gears, and we'll have to use uh, planks to make said gears. And for each one of these, it needs 20 planks and 30 planks. So 50 planks in total, and planks require... One log. Actually, that isn't too bad. So there's a total of 50 logs to make an absolutely stupendously amazing water tank. Which may, if the advice I received in the comments is uh, accurate, which may prevent any water evaporation. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to plant on these tiles, though. That's a bit of a shame. It's uh, cracked and dry. Quite the shame there, actually. Uh, in that case, then, let's go ahead and, for the time being, we're doing quite well for... Uh, for food. So I'm going to say go ahead and plant trees there then. We'll remove these areas of planting and I'll build some uh, some storages over there, I'm sure. And welcome back to River Knight 220. Joining us, Zorjavak uh, 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 decided that uh, River Knight 220 was definitely an easier name to say. So there we go. Welcome to the colony. Sadly, we have lost uh, Encrypt, who died of old age. Right, now, we've managed to get our fifth water barrel up and running. Super happy with that, and we're doing a very good job with getting in all of these potatoes. I actually have to prioritize potatoes for harvest, and that has helped quite a lot, but uh, we're definitely pulling in way more food than we need. That is the reality that we've got right now. So eventually these will slow down and, and stop uh, working for a little while. In fact, I'm kind of tempted to do that right now because we've got 296. Eventually, this can hold 120. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause that right now because we've got a lot of other things to be doing. Uh, Forrester is getting on with planting trees. Brutus Salazar taking care of that. Thank you very much, Brutus. We have still got a, a couple more berry bushes to remove. And we are presently, or, or certainly I hope, going to see a, uh, a the first stairs in the colony. Applying some new ideas over there. There we go. Marvellous. I'm going to draw out a path right there. And let's see how far in we can get this. Reasonably far, actually. There's plenty of trees that you're going to be able to chop down straight away. But let's go ahead and pop one right in here if we can. Make sure that I'm going to grab every single tree in this area. That will do lovely. There we are. Now, as we move further and further away from the... Uh, from the capital building, the district building, the ability for our builders to reach points will diminish. Now, that is going to become an especially big issue out in that direction. Uh, let's go ahead and try and place down a little bit more there, and that might stretch this out just a tiny bit more. Yeah, but uh, eventually, as you can see, the path 
goes from green into a deep red, eventually it gets too far away. And no matter what, whether you've got the materials or not, the builders simply aren't going to go for a job that far away from where they work. At that stage, we're going to need some other options. There's the hauling post and there's the builder's hut. The builder's hut is probably the one that we're going to be wanting to get up and running. That'll give us some more builders and we'll be able to build that much further out and thus do some more work. Though, honestly, that's not so much of a concern for us right now. Uh, we're unlikely to get this set up in time, which is a bit of a shame, but it's, it shouldn't be too bad. We've got a lot of water put away for, for later. But one of the big things for us at the moment is going to be a bit more of a permanent solution. Uh, not necessarily permanent, that's perhaps the wrong word, but a much more robust solution to dealing with the frequent droughts than just two small dams. And specifically, my eye is on this little area here, this area there, and indeed this area across here. I'm thinking that the very first large scale water uh, manipulation project that we're going to go for is we are going to dam up this little area just on the first level and over here two levels of damming and that should mean that during the the wet season this entire area will flood and this area in particular will flood to, uh, up to three layers deep that is going to be amazing for us that at three layers, that will probably get through most of the the droughts, the big droughts. I think after a certain point, like uh, at like four or five layers, th there is no drought that will ever dry that out. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I seem to recall something along those lines. Do please, by all means, uh, let me know in the comments if my uh, reasoning is uh, on on course with that. Let's uh, pop down another spot there. But in terms of food, we're doing absolutely amazingly well uh, i don't think we really need to worry all that much though i am growing a little bit concerned about the amount of potatoes that we don't have already drawn in now how is brutus doing brutus is doing relatively well i will say we've only got three jobs that don't have anyone in at the moment which is actually quite impressive all things said and uh, that probably has a bit to do with ubuzur and smekos having grown up let's find out what their true names are. Everyone say hello to Little Rabbit and Biclo. Smagos and Ubazar have decided on Biclo and Little Rabbit respectively. Thank you ever so much for your support and welcome to the colony. Long may you, uh, you find your home here. Right, well, with the drought about to hit, I think it's time for us to finally do something to lift the spirit of our peeps a little bit. Now, as I mentioned in the last episode, it appeared to me that social life didn't really provide anything for us. However, quite a few people commented that somewhere in the tooltips on the game, it will mention that the, uh, sorry, uh, the, the loading splash screen tooltips, that social life will increase the development of the young. I'm not sure if that's going to apply for Iron Teeth, the way it might uh, for Folk Tales, but either way, this is definitely worth uh, worth us checking out. So, with that being said, how about we drop one of these over here and maybe leave a little room besides for us to place some other buildings uh, as well. Obviously, it would be wonderful to place this up somewhere on top. That is a possibility. Uh, but a little bit more of a tricky one for now. I think we're just going to place it over here, as much as that is kind of prime real estate, if you will. Uh, I'll actually spot it over here, just because that will mean that I'll be able to possibly have an extra uh, storage area just there. Now, I'm going to give that an ultra-high priority, because we're not finishing this in time. That's just not going to be happening, sadly. Uh, still, if we can get the... Uh, the campfire up and running, then hopefully we'll see... Our young'uns growing up that little bit faster. Now, at this point, uh, I think, again, we're probably in a fairly solid position as far as our water supplies go. Uh, I'm not going to worry over much about that one, but the, the drought is flowing through, sadly. Uh, what we will be doing is, over the course of this drought, probably finishing off this dam, and the next one 
will be a much easier for us to to manage this one is going to be 6.8 days long so you know with our population as it is uh let's go ahead and pause the development of more mouths to feed and tongues to wet just for the time being i'm going to pause it despite it being relatively far away uh just because i know i'll probably forget <laughs> Uh, I'll try and keep an eye on it, but uh, let's let's err on the side of caution here. Acknowledge a weakness, and uh, one day we will turn it into a strength, I'm sure. But uh, for the time being, we'll just get things going. There we go. We've already got our little campfire set up. Now uh, we can have a total of five beavers just chilling out on on the uh, the stools and the benches. And at night time, that will actually be lit up properly, which will be lovely. Now, at the moment, we've got four vacancies. Are there four paused jobs? One, two, three, four. Uh, yes, there are that many paused jobs. But one thing I'm quite acutely aware of is we have no more beds. Hmm. Let's go ahead. And just as well, I mean, I left this room there, I suppose. Let's get another area for our for our beavers to live in we always want to have an abundance of free beds i would much rather have free beds than than anyone ever have to go homeless uh, if we can avoid that that would be ideal uh nothing to do in range oh right yes of course my bad i should tell you to chop down the everything forever uh what was i thinking there we go sorted that should get a fair old number of trees in. Let's pause you. We'll unpause you. There we go. We've got a, a fair few over there that we can grab. We've actually got a nice amount of logs there. And honestly, we were actually really, really frustratingly close to finishing that dam over there. Oh, well. Uh, we've got one more tree to chop down here. But we will then have to wait a little bit. That being said, we've got quite a lot of trees over here. So maybe... We might as well head straight up. I think so. Yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and make our way up, and then we can start chopping down all of these trees as well. We've also got this area just at the back here that we can access. And honestly, given the amount of uh, of science we have, it may be time for us to consider grabbing a floodgate. Uh, we've got a got a little bit further to go for that one, unfortunately. Never mind. Uh, right, so over here, we're going to want another uh, layer. Uh, so we'll pop down one stair there and a platform. Now, you might be wondering, well, why don't I just go straight up? Well, uh, allow me to demonstrate the beauty of the Iron Teeth. They are very industrially minded. Let's Let's be quite honest here. We can just do that. Now, the Folk Tales wood storage doesn't have a roof, so you can't build up. And a lot of their buildings don't allow for vertical construction. But it, that seems to be a, a prime focus for the Iron Teeth, and I am all about that right now. That is actually amazingly good. Uh, we'll also draw this out in preparation for what comes next, because we're going to be going up an extra level besides as well uh to be fair we're actually making some decent progress on the science over there which i'm very very happy for and we've got loads of trees over here to chop down we're actually in a fairly solid position all things said and done uh how much more have we got down here not very much at all in fact if we're lucky you're going to be bringing along too in fact you did fantastic let's place down an extra uh bit of road along there there we go We've only got two more to do, so 40 logs, which we already have, and that will be prepared for the next drought. I'm really, really pleased with that. Obviously, there are, there's a load of other structures for us to build up, but uh, that is going to take a little bit of extra time. I'm really, really happy, though, with the current state of our resources. Very, very happy with that, actually. Uh, Zelia has grown up, and Platinum Toast has died of old age. Rest in peace, Platinum Toast. But let's find out what Zalia's name, uh, true name, is. Everyone, please say hello to Vanya Lostwin. Welcome to the colony. I 
know you're going to enjoy it here. There's plenty of things to do. We've even now got a bonfire. I didn't actually focus on that in the night. I am a massive derp, and I apologize. Uh, nevertheless, uh, moving along, swiftly along, because, you know, let's let's try and forget about the things that I do wrong. Uh, let's see. We are probably safe to turn off this for now. Yeah, let's, let's shut that down for the time being. That gives us a, a few more peeps that we can have out and about. And at this stage, not strictly necessary to have anyone there. So Brutus Salazar, I'm dropping that down to a low priority. If someone is available, then that's fine. Uh, but what we want to do now is we want to mark the areas that I've set up for being tree farms as permanent harvest areas. Uh, we will c cut all of that down as soon as we get the uh, the chance. We're waiting on one tree down here, and then we're sorted. We've got a, a handful of trees over there. We've got a maple tree over here, which would be... Uh, oh, sorry, a chestnut tree. Rather, two chestnut trees ready to go. So as far as the amount of uh, resources flowing into the colony, we're actually not doing too bad at all. All things said and done. That said, that's going to take 12 logs. How many for this? That's going to take another 8. And we are on the final part of the dam. That is fantastic, I must say. Now let's have a look at the current water level. We've got another 3 days. I would say that we've consumed over half of the water that we started with. And we are only a about halfway through but you will notice that this little area over here will take a little bit longer to deplete i believe simply because this side is getting yeah it's probably a lot easier to see if we <laughs> kind of glitch through the the wall a little bit this area isn't getting pumped out this one is and that is why i built the dam there is this will keep our farms going just for a little bit longer as long as we have this one pump on the go though i think generally speaking we're fine even through this drought and by the next one we're going to have this up and running in fact there we go we have got it up and running so the next uh drought will have all of this area also storing water which we will be able to allow through uh in an emergency to top up this area as well that being said let's go ahead and get the floodgate it is time marvelous this is exactly, exactly what we wanted. Now, there is a, a trick with floodgates. Unlike the dams, you can't walk on a floodgate. So with that in mind, we're going to have to do something a, a little bit special. And that is, we're going to create a little path going up and around. Something like that. And then we'll replace this one with the uh, the floodgate now the idea with the floodgate is that i just want a single tile to trickle water down here as necessary unfortunately you know obviously i've uh, built all of that area up and now i need to take it away kind of a pain in the bum but uh, we'll wait for that to be built first uh, though that being said given that this is going to be a very high priority for us uh, i want that ready for the next drought we will prioritize its construction but I think that's more or less all the time we've got for this episode. Let's have a quick recap of what we've got. We've gained access to this upper area here. We're not going to be replanting this. This is just like a one-time deal, really. All these dead trees can be harvested. We're probably going to do exactly the same on this side. We are expanding out. Uh, wait a second. Why are you there? Uh, oh, thank goodness you can move through it. Uh, we are expanding out our log storage. I'm very, very happy with that. Food-wise, we have gone from, eh, you know, things a little bit touch and go here and there to everything is amazing, super awesome, all the time, no problems whatsoever. And the, in one episode, more or less. So I'm actually kind of surprised how well we did with that. We've got more than enough berries to keep our youngsters going for a very long time. We've got stupid amounts of uh, potatoes, sunflower seeds, carrots, everything is going well. So much so, in fact. Now let's go ahead and uh, allow that one to speed up just a little bit. Wow, we've got uh, three new youngsters have become, well, not youngsters, oldsters, I guess. Uh, I think at this point we are actually going to allow more in the breeding pods and the final thing that we're going to do in this episode is we're going to go ahead and uh, find out who the three new beavers are who just joined our colony so grisha is in actual fact 
Isham. Welcome, welcome. We've also got Vinjin, who has selected Ellie FCR. They were very specific about the FCR being capitalized at the end of their name. Fair enough. Uh, I won't ask too many questions. And Vubal has selected Tarin Winterblade as their true name. Welcome, all of you. Thank you ever so much once again for your continued patron support. And I hope you're going to enjoy yourself in the colony. We've done an amazing job. We have got a dam up on the second level. And uh, in the next episode, we will probably finish this off and actually get a uh, floodgate going. We've got plenty of food coming in. We've even gotten to the point now of having our own tree farm. We do still need some uh, room for the... the uh, uh, beavers to sleep. We are starting to to run out of space. We've got one homeless beaver at the moment. We will should be able to quickly get that sorted. In fact, I'm going to put that at the very highest priority. Like I said earlier, I would rather them having uh, somewhere to sleep rather than getting this little bit fixed. This is functional as it is, but uh, getting that sleep is no small uh, bonus for our beavers simply because it gives them an extra 25% life expectancy they will live just a little bit longer and by a little bit i mean a quarter as long again and be able to do work for the colony for that entire time this is efficiency we are we are squeezing out every drop of work out of our beavers and that seems a very int thing to do but that is going to be it from me i really do hope you have enjoyed and we're going to have one last look at the colony as it is starting to to expand out and you can compare what it looked like at the beginning to what it looks like at the end but that is going to be it from me and our entire cast of characters here who are doing fantastically well for themselves i must say as always i look forward to any feedback you have down below but until next time do take care everyone